Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No. I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone. But who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues, that's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered, but if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused, I had a chat with him yesterday, and he impressed me, but there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course. Come in.
constable. About the tranquilizer. Who gave you the glass of champagne? It was Captain De Conti. You're sure? He doesn't deny it, but he also says that the glasses passed through many hands that night and that everyone had access to the champagne. So it could have been anyone. Maybe the question isn't who put the poison in the glass, but rather who it was they wanted to poison. Smart. And who were they trying to poison? Dr. Gebhardt? Hmm. An unconscious ship's doctor. That sounds like it would be more used to a murderer than a drugged constable. You think so? Did the murderer have reason to assume that his shot might not kill the victim immediately and, and that Dr. Gebhardt would be able to save her? You're right. That's improbable. <laughs> My ego is just searching for reasons for them to want to kill her and not me. Good job, Zelna. I'll be in touch if I uncover more clues. Very well. This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. Another alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken. But there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. The door frame was damaged when Dr. Gebhardt kicked it in. The real question is, why was the door locked in the first place? Hmm. There should be a ventilation shaft behind the hatch. Usually a good way to break in and out undetected. But we're on a ship. The ventilation shafts are very small here. The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by the explosion. An impressive piece. But I don't think it'll get me anywhere with the murder investigations. Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first-class cabins have them. It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board, and I will expose him. B. <whistles> the Baroness seems to have known the murderer, and that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message, otherwise he'd have said something. The mannequin surely came with the cabin. A mannequin for the Baroness's clothes would have a more generous figure. Sunflowers. By Van Gogh, I presume. He liked to paint that sort of thing. Can't be an original. They cost thousands of francs. There's still blood on the mattress. The sheet and the blanket have already been removed. To analyze them, I suppose. <laughs> 